Hey everybody, uh, Chief Meteorologist Brad Thedovich here. Quick update on our Arctic blasts. Kind of wintry weather. I know it's not really a whole bunch of precipitation, but it's having some significant impacts. And probably by now, a lot of you know local school districts all across the area are going virtual or e-learning or in some cases canceling. And you're probably wondering, Brad, it's not that big a deal. Why are, why are they doing that? Well, from a weather standpoint, it's kind of just a black ice threat in the morning. There's certainly going to be slick spots. It's been raining all day. It's still raining tonight. There's some areas of snow, but think about it too. We can do virtual learning. Uh, we're in the middle of a COVID spike, so why not do a three-day, everybody stay at home thing, and we kind of kill three birds with one stone kind of thing. So I think there's a lot of reasons you're seeing it. It's more than just the weather, but there is a weather component, uh, which I will talk about right here. And you can see I mean, if I refresh that, there we go. We've got some precipitation out there. It's been raining most of the day, and I'm getting some reports of snow on and off throughout the day. We've seen reports of snow kind of moving from south to north um, as, I mean, from, yeah, basically from, from south to north here as we've seen this little batch of moisture drifting south. Let me move the map just a little bit. Kind of getting squirrely there. But you can see right in here, we're getting a little bit of a rain-snow mix. I'm looking at my MPing reports over here. And there are some people crowdsourcing saying, hey, I'm seeing some snow mixed there. I just got a good report out of Kings Mountain area, which uh, lines up really well with that little batch of moisture moving there. Um, and just to show you the temperatures from north to south, uh, we're already below freezing up near Interstate 40. And in Mecklenburg County, Gaston County, Lincoln County, surrounding counties, we're getting close to the coldest we've been today. We're above freezing, but the atmosphere is definitely cooling down uh, pretty quickly out there right now as the front, the Arctic front, is starting to push off to the east. So this Arctic front, let me widen this out, is right here. So you can kind of see this is a stalled front that's going to be somewhere in here and probably sit there tonight, maybe drifting towards the coast. I tell you what, if it gets stuck right there, we're going to have a little bit something more to watch tomorrow. But right now I'm thinking it's going to drift a little bit closer to that location um, by tomorrow, which would at least give us a lull in the activity. But... You get the idea. There's a lot of moisture out there. And at the same time, really, really cold air is coming in from the north. And that's kind of setting the stage for uh, what we call overrunning. Some warm moist air trying to ride up and over this Arctic air mass over the region. A crazy looking map of all the winter weather advisories and ice storm and uh, winter storm warnings for areas you don't normally see them uh, on the coast. For our area, winter weather advisory is an upgrade from a watch but it also means it's not as much snow. We usually need about three inches in six hours or over four inches in uh, 12 hours to kind of get a warning criteria in our area. It's gonna be well below that. So it gets a winter weather advisory. And don't worry the county lines, that doesn't stop at the county line. I know uh, we're gonna see precipitation uh, even over there. So everybody's gonna see kind of the same impacts. And here's probably the main reason. Tonight, we're gonna drop into the upper 20s. That's gonna pose a huge risk for black ice in the morning. And then tomorrow, we never get above freezing. It stays in the 20s. And as this front stalls, another wave of low pressure develops right there. And notice where that kind of snow mix line gets very close to Charlotte. Does it make it all the way here? It's hard to say. I think there could be a brief mix. It's going to be flurries or snow showers. Certainly not a huge deal, but enough that it's so cold out there that we could have some serious problems because tomorrow's high temperatures are only going to be 29. These are not the lows. Let me reiterate that. These are not the lows. These are the high temperatures on Friday. So we're never going to crack freezing in a lot of locations. And that's going to mean anything that falls is going to be iced up in the morning and in the afternoon. It's not going to melt. So our weather timeline kind of shows you here, you know, black ice will be an issue in the morning. There's probably going to be a lull in the activity in the middle of the day. And then going into the evening, I could see slick spots redevelop. This is nothing like Sunday storm. It is nothing remotely close to that. So don't think that we're going to see anything remotely close to that right now. It looks to me to be just slick travel. And I'll show you how this unfolds overnight. You see temperatures falling into the 20s. So tomorrow morning we wake up, you know, in the 20s. But notice here we are, middle of the day tomorrow. It's 28 degrees. Cloudy skies. Go into the afternoon. Maybe a few snow showers and even again. Doesn't look overwhelming. I'll go back and forth. You kind of get the idea. There'll be some scattered snow showers and flurries. The areas with the best chance of seeing something, probably Wadesboro to Shiraw, out towards Rockingham. So those would be the areas that maybe get an inch, maybe an inch and a half. Right now, I think a trace to an inch is going to cover us. But look how cold it is on Saturday morning. I mean, upper teens, wind chills will be in the single digits. 
Burr, and then Saturday. We get above freezing by mid-afternoon, but just barely. That is going to be tough going. So here's a look at the snowfall map. No changes really from my ideas this morning. Um, we made some adjustments in the last 24 to 36 hours, but this has been pretty consistent now. Trace the one inch. If there's going to be an area that surprises, maybe out in there, but I'm still thinking one to two inches um, there at the most, at the very, very most. But we can't emphasize how cold this is going to be this weekend. The temperatures are not, but we're going to have a gusty northeast wind. So tomorrow, wind chills, teens to near 20. Look at the wind chills in the middle of the day. It's going to feel like it's in the teens and 20s all day tomorrow. So brutally cold. And then going into Friday night, to me, this is some of the coldest area we've seen so far. You can see, you know, single digits and teens. And, you know, we have not seen, in fact, let me pop this up because this number kind of blew me away earlier today, how long it's been since we've had a high temperature in Charlotte where we stayed below 32 degrees. It has been 1,475 days. The last time was January 7th, way back in 2018. So this is the coldest air in over three years. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea of just how cold this air mass has been. So I'll have an update tonight at 11. Stay safe out there. Watch out for black eyes. And the biggest story here is just stay warm. It is going to be a brutally cold weekend. Take care of your people, your pets, your plants, um, and your pipes in some cases. Most pipes will be okay. The pipes that I worry about, outdoor spigots and, and um, hoses, might want to just disconnect those so they don't get a frozen uh, water, come a for, frozen water line kind of working its way in from outside. But the pets and people, uh, definitely keep an eye on your neighbors and friends and watch out for people using, you know, improper heating sources because people are going to try to stay warm and they'll do just about anything. And sometimes it's dangerous. So please be safe this weekend.